Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the TriStar webinar. My name is uh, Tiago Palaniapan, a mechanical engineer. I work as a senior applications engineer at TriStar. Uh, I've been a user of uh, Pro Engineer on the Creo right now for about 24 years. Was in the industry for a good part of my career. I've been working at TriStar for the last 12 years. Um, before we start the, um, the webinar, um, just wanted to if, you know, point out uh, that there is a handout uh, section in the webinar uh, that you know, has a PDF on the top enhancements in Creo 7 that you could download and view it during the presentation or later. Uh, all uh, attendees uh, will be uh, muted during this uh, presentation, uh, but feel free to start typing in your questions uh, in the questions area. And towards the end of the presentation, I'll uh, try to get to as many questions as we can. Um, the topic today is uh, on Creo 7.0. As many of you know, Creo 7 was released back in April, and it's been uh, one of PTC's uh, exciting uh, releases in recent times. Uh, so we have been running quite a few webinars on that. Today's topic is on the core enhancements. Uh, we have been running a few things on the special extensions, etc. But you know. Um, today we wanted to run uh, mainly on the core areas in Creo 7. Um, uh, before we begin, those who are not familiar with uh, TriStar, um, we are a company that specializes in helping manufacturing companies uh, adopt software systems and processes to enable better and more uh, efficient product development, right? So that's uh, we do that by being uh, the largest reseller, valuated reseller for PTC products worldwide. Uh, we are headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona, and um, we have been in business for um, nearly 25 years, and we are experts in CAD, data management, PLM, and product development, and also have some custom solutions with us to help you. Um, um, so with that uh, said, let's uh, also go over some of the time-limited offers um, that we are running through the end of this quarter. I mean, it's uh, just a couple more weeks uh, or just a few more, a couple till September 27th here. So if you're interested in any of these uh, promotions on spe specifically the Creo extensions uh, and the loan subscription, please reach out to your reps, uh, account reps at TriStar or visit tristar.com to know more information about these uh, time limited offers. So on the agenda, you know, the plan was uh, what I was going over, uh, planning was to go over uh, for this webinar is to cover the core areas like sketcher, modeling, you know, assembly, design, sheet metal, surfacing, et cetera, including detailing. At the same time, I also wanted to go over one of the big enhancements in Creo 7. I want to start with that uh, multi-body design, uh, which has been a, a big, big uh, enhancement in the core area in Creo 7 compared to Creo 6. So we'll go over that. Um, uh, before I start, uh, just a quick overview here on uh, the different enhancement areas that PTC did in Creo 7 compared to Creo 6, right? They they did it on augmented reality, AR, it's been there since Creo 4 and 5. Um, core modeling, right? Surfacing, sheet metal design or well design. Uh, there are also some new um, exciting technologies that they have. Uh, like generative design, uh, AI-based generative design, uh, the ANSYS-based Creo Simulation Live that has fluids now, and a few others in there. But these are the areas that PTC uh, has uh, worked on in improving some improvements in Creo 7 compared to Creo 6, and all these are available in the PTC help file as well. So, so first off, let's um, let me start off with Creo 7.0. Um, as you can see, um, starting Creo 7.0, when you create a new part or open an existing part, um, by default, you should see bodies, right? So uh, finally, PTC allows you to have one single part, but different bodies inside of them. And they could be solid bodies. They could be construction bodies that you could use that doesn't affect mass properties, or they could affect mass properties. So it's very flexible and I think it's uh, it allows um, you know easier modeling and a lot of use cases that I'll demonstrate in a little bit here. Uh, so it also allows Boolean operations such as merge, intersect, subtract, split body, etc. So all the way from the design side and to the simulation side, you have a lot of use cases uh, for this multi-body. So that's a big, big enhancement in 7.0. 
Um, so if I were to list some of the use cases that I'll try to demonstrate here in a little bit, it's, uh, you know, part design, um, you know, it's easier with multi-body. I'll show you compared to using quilts and surfacing, uh, Boolean operations with tool bodies, um, and in additive manufacturing, when you want to create a lattice structure, for example, and generative design, you may want to have keep out areas where you could use bodies for that. Uh, compared to the geometry or volume that you want to really do optimize. Um, and then in simulation, right, it's the fluid volume that you could use it when you do a fluid flow analysis. Um, even in injection molded parts, when you have multi-shot, maybe over mold, you know, situations where it would be nice to quickly create it in the part model and then you could export it as separate parts if required, even have multiple materials on those bodies. Um, the drawing, the 2D drawing also supports, um, so the 2D drawing uh, also supports uh, um, uh, in uh, support um, supports uh, multi-body situations wherein you could have your assembly as well as your drawing table, um, and those could also have um, uh, you know multi-body support. We'll go through that, including sheet metal data exchange. Um, I see that already. There's a question about how PDM link can recognize multiple bodies. But we'll, we'll go over that um, uh, in a little bit here. Towards the end, I'll, I'll talk about that too. Creo View supports multi-body, uh, Creo View 6.1 and above. As for Winchell itself, I think starting 12.0 is when uh, it'll start supported. But for now, your structure doesn't change. Um, you know, when you're checking a part with multiple bodies, it's still gonna be one part. So a lot of use cases there. Um, so like I said, you know, the speed with which you're able to create geometry such as these, right, that I'm showing you here. Uh, in the past, we had to use uh, quilts or surfacing or multiple workarounds to create that. Now we could use uh, bodies. Uh, also, uh, when you have uh, a, a multi-material a, a multi, um, injection mold uh, like this, like you see the over mold uh, and the main body here, I could have two bodies there as well as for even creating a cooling channel like this, right? I could use it. Um, it could also be used for uh, fluid flow when you do a simulation, for example, right? So um, so there are several use cases I wanna go over. Before I go further, let me just quickly demonstrate some of them here. Um, first off, uh, if I open, if I create any new part, so what I have is Creo 7010, the latest date code of 7.0. And uh, when I create a new part in Creo 7.0, by default, you should see bodies right in there, right? So wherein you have the ability to create new body, split body, and you have Boolean operations, right? So it's some, something that you're going to see by default uh, in Creo for a new part. And if I ha open an existing part as well, so let's say if I open this uh, new part here, right? I have a few sketches already done here, and I'm going to use my sketch region, right? Uh, in Creo 5, PTC had introduced a sketch region concept, uh, if you remember. So wherein I can just select some of these regions in here, right? Um, and then I can start uh, extruding them. So right now it's a single body, right? I've just done a simple extrude in here. Uh, maybe I wanna go add additional ones in here. I wanna just go extrude. Uh, let's just go flip this. And I'm gonna just say, this is gonna go through all. I've just created that hole in there and I'm gonna extrude this. So, so far I'm just doing basic extruding on one single body. So if you look at the body there, I have one main body that is active and all the features are contributing to that body, right? Right now, these all these three features are contributing to that body one. Uh, but what I could do is I could just go and say, let, let's uh, add a few additional bodies in here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add another, uh, extrude here um, or maybe let's see if I could just go and deselect this and let's you know so that we get the hole also there um, and when I'm doing this I have the option in all features now you're going to see in shape features to either create a new body or use the existing body so that's something that you're going to start seeing starting Creo 7 right uh, and let's say I want to create a new body out of that and that it goes right so now you see that I have two bodies, I'm able to expand these contributing features. As I build these features, I have extrude four contributing to body two. I have these contributing to this, right? And then I can start adding, um, for example, uh, maybe I wanna go 
extrude, um, uh, uh, let's see here, if I could remove the material here, I'm gonna extrude it to a certain depth. Um, and that's all going to be in that Act 2 body, right? My body 2 is active right now. Um, and if I go extrude that also again, and maybe you know, uh, not remove material there, uh, and maybe I wanna just snap to up here, right? Uh, so I did a very, very simple model here. It's just two bodies. Um, now, um, it, the Act 2 body could be any of these, right? I could set that as the Act 2 body, or I could set this as the Act 2 body. But regardless, when I create rounds, like features like rounds, it understands that it's on this body and that round will belong to that main body that we had before, for example, right? So there it is, the round is automatically in here. Um, or if I go and add, uh, for example, I wanna create my, my rounds on in here, it understands that this round was part of, that jump is part of body two, even though that's active, it's contributing in there. Now, if I do try, this will be interesting, if I do try create a round on these, right? So let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna add, collect the edges from multiple bodies. It's still able to handle that or create that round, but it's um, it's technically being added, you know, you know, as you can see this round three right there, it's on, on both the bodies actually. Um, if I do try to create a round here, you know, it's gonna happen, right? It's gonna, it's not, um, it's going to be on either this part or that part or that body, the upper body or the lower body there. And you can assign different material properties, right? I can go assign different material properties for these. I can assign uh, colors. For example, I could just go and uh, assign a, a, a different color for one of those bodies right there, uh, as you can see. So that body is having a different color. This body is having a different color, right? And I can keep doing this, right? I can keep working on this. Maybe I want to add some... Uh, uh, going back to my, uh, I can do sh features like shells, where I could say I want to, I want to shell this, right? I want to just exclude some surfaces, etc. Or I could just say let's make this one active, and then I can just do a, a shell on that guy right here, um, and and this allows me to, you know, take care of these kind of situations. If you didn't have a body, you'll have to exclude these surfaces, and this would have been just for an easier workflow here. Um, and having done what I'm supposed to be doing right there, I got, I, I, I'm almost using the second body that we created just to prevent for my shell feature to just work the bottom there. And now I could just go and merge it, right? So you have all your Boolean operations like merge, intersect, remove, you know, subtract or split, et cetera, which I'll show you in a little bit one by one here. And now I can just say, I wanna just merge and there it is, it's one single body at this point. So as you can see that other body is consumed and I have the features contributing. So, so that's the basic uh, of uh, just a basic example to show you uh, what's multi-body is all about in Creo on the design side. Now, you could also use it uh, mainly for as a tool to create these Boolean-based operations that we used to do using quilts and surfacing and several features, right? Um, with a lot of uh, references going on, and you know, you know, as a design, you know, some of the engineers may not be aware of that methodology. They find it difficult to edit. So this way, you're able to create, as you can see here, I'm able to use uh, a Boolean intersect to create that geometry, to create this 3D curve for that um, cooling channel. You know, I can just add two bodies in there, create an intersect. You know, um, in, you intersect a body to body, and I can create it. So just just a few examples where we would be using some traditional, you know, feature tools. But instead of that, this is another option. So just to go through a few examples on that, um, if I were to go to, uh, let's see here, I'm going to go open up a, design where I've done a little bit of, you know, I already used bodies to get these cavities and everything, but now, you know, I'm just in this process of creating the sweep here. So say on this 3D curve, I want to create a, a sweep. And I would like to just do a, a quick circle or something up here, the certain specific diameter. Um, and right now it's part of the same body right like i said with the extrude right if you look at the body options it's just using the main body but i'm just going to go say let's go use create a new body and it is a new body as you can see now right um so uh, when i have a new body and two bodies on top right now if i look at my cross section and i can show interference right right so if i go and show interference looks like i do have 
some interference there. So I got to subtract this geometry and still keep this body in there, right? To remove that interference. Or I could just go and, um, you know, check it in a 2D view right here. And there also you have the option to show interference in red. And, and many of you may have used it back in Creo 2 where uh, cross sections always had that uh, 2D view, right? Wherein you're able to clip through the cross section in real time, the system is kind of showing you where uh, if it's uh, if it's highlighted in red, that means you know there is interference there. This could be also very useful in assembly mode, as well as in part mode. Now that we have bodies uh, support in here, right? So so that's uh, so we do have interference, and to remove that, obviously I'll have to subtract. So if I go to this geometry, my mini toolbar kind of goes back to the parent body that it belongs to, right? I go to that body, and I'm able to do. Uh, merge, intersect, subtract, etc. Right. So I'm going to say let's subtract the, you know, that you know this geometry. And by default, it'll be consumed, as you can see. But there's an option to keep it. Right. So keep bodies. Right. I can go to. If you forget to do it, you can always redefine in 7010. Can go back and you can just say I want to keep bodies here, or I'm just using a mini toolbar. In Creo 6, pretty much all the dashboard options are available here. So we are just I'm just using that. So when I say I want to keep that body, I get to keep both of them in there. And there it is. And now if you see my interference right there, there is no, I'm turned on show interference and there is no interference in there. So that's, you know, one use case. And if you really think about it, if I go back to some of these, uh, let's go to the main body. I start off with one body, as you can see here. And then I created this side pockets. Uh, that's where, um, if you see my, uh, if you see the bodies, I could even use construction geometry. Uh, you know, I consider body as construction, right? Um, meaning it won't be affecting mass properties. It's a brilliant way, I think, to to use it almost as a reference geometry, if you will, to create your geometries uh, without really creating the solid or allowing it to affect your mass properties. So here I've used, uh, if you if you see the pocket here. Um, so if I go back to, you know, I have this green body that I've created, uh, but then after doing my pattern and, you know, all, all this right in here, I've added my pattern and everything in that component. It's almost, uh, I'm, I'm going to just do a subtract and that body is gone now, right? Once you subtract. So I'm using those type of construction bodies there. Um, and similarly, uh, there is to create that curve itself. To create a 3D curve, that's an interesting curve, right? How do I create a curve like that? I did a sweep that was easy, but how is that done? If I go back here, uh, maybe I'll just hide some of these. Um, I'm going to unhide uh, some of these bodies that I used. I'll just remove the interference for now. Um, let's see. We'll just go not show interference, and we'll go to the main body and we'll hide that guy right there. And so there is one body that I have used, um, and then. I've created another, uh, a new body, as you can see here, right? You could see those two new features are in this. That's the, there's a curve body, uh, you know, and then there's body 11, right? Um, and um, I've done some patterns, some mirroring, just to create some features. But then, uh, and then when I go to my rounds and, you know, extrudes and everything that's all done, you know, just, just creating that shape, those are some basic features in there. At this point of time, I should be able to create and intersect body right so I, sh I should be able to go to boolean operations in here and there's intersect and i should be able to intersect this and i go to this one and you know if i go to this one um and if i go to bodies to modify is this one here i'm able to get the intersection body so I, I use that um as a tool here to create my 3d curve i've already done this so that's kind of you know and then um there is an intersect feature right uh, we're in, um, and then I'm, I'm, I just you know it's quick and easy to once you have a body like that it's really quick and easy to go uh, shift select this entire chain right so that I just grab, grab that entire chain and I could do a, a, a quick uh, copy and paste and that gives me my composite curve right there is that I can use it for other operations right like sweep for example so that's kind of the workflow that I used or at least you know just just to give you an idea of other ways. And finally, once I'm done with all this, I don't need that body. What I could do, I could select the body that I just created, this curve base, and simply remove the body. So it's really nice that how you're not only using it for situations like I showed you with the earlier example, but you're able to just, you know, forcefully remove that body and, and it's gone, right? So, but we used it to generate that curve.
uh, in there. So if I go back to my, there is, right, there is, this is the result of this entire group in here, right? That is the whole point of that. So instead of using sweeps, instead of using my quilts or surfacing, there's an alternate method, right? I know many of you could be using different methods to get here, but just uh, to show you the other options there. So similar to that, I might have uh, situations like wherein I might, um, uh, let's see here if I could show you one more example before we go back to maybe a few more in here. Uh, let's see, maybe uh, there it is. Um, something like this, right? So wherein um, I may want to create um, uh, a part like uh, like this one here with a pattern and that should be not a very complex feature, but many times you have to use some surfacing and the referencing you use and multiple quilts and stuff that. Let me show you an alternate method using this uh, uh, body option. So if I go in here um, and my planes uh, on in here, I'm going to just extrude uh, a new body to, for that pattern, right? To removing that material. That's what I'm going to do here. And let's say I want to go with uh, a specific, we'll just give in some known values. By the way, in Creo 7, uh, we'll talk about that in a bit on Sketcher. They've you know improved the visibility here better. If you cursor over it, it kind of highlights what it's for, et cetera, right? What is that controlling, right? And they have you have the ability to increase those uh, uh, the, the icon size, et cetera. That's a new thing in 7.0. Uh, I also want to add, uh, maybe we'll just position this to drive my pattern from here to here. We'll just, there it is, okay. And once I'm done, as always, with all shape features now, starting Creo 6, you are able to access every uh, you know, even within the dashboard, you were able to access all the options in the, in the dashboard up here before you had to do a right click and hold. Now it's all available here, right in here. I'm going to go symmetric depth. And when I do the symmetric depth, then I'm going to give it a specific uh, value here just so that it cuts through there too. But I'm going to create a new body out of this, right? There it is. And maybe add some, uh, let's see if I can add some chamfers uh, to these. We'll just set it to specific value there there it goes and now I'd like to group these so you can you know all those I'm going to quickly group these uh, and I'm going to pattern these and again when I do a pattern see all the different options whether you dimension pattern or direction pattern axis pattern fill pattern table all those are available right in here starting Creo 6.0 you no longer have to go up here and then which you can still do right but it's really nice that how you can access it here. I'm going to just do a, a dimension pattern, use this as a driver for the direction. And I'll just say we want about uh, so many in there, right? I got, uh, there it goes. Just made it a little bit longer uh, in there. And now I should be able to use uh, my remote material, right? Let's just do a, a quick uh, extrude on here. Uh, when I do this extrude, um, I can make use of the offset tool with loop, right? I should be able to just loop this and the arrow is pointing in this direction. So maybe let's give it a, a negative half uh, units right in there. So it's going inside in there. Um, and, um, and there it is, right? That's the icon, you know, that shows that I've used an offset edge command in there. Um, there it is. And now I should be able to just, uh, let's give it a specific value. We'll just give it a specific value there and we'll also remove material but this time the direction is obviously going to be this side so there it is right um and and I've, so now i should just be able to go to this body right to the main body and i should be able to just say let's go remove or subtract um and if i go to my modifying bodies this is the one i want to subtract and you know just another way to use it, right? So if you're using bodies to create these type of features, right? Instead of using surfacing or other techniques that we had to use in Creo 6 and prior, right? So we're going back to here. So some more um, additional um, use cases here, like an injection molded parts, right? So here you have the main design body and then the over mold body right here. Um, so you could have different um, cross section, different materials, cross section patterns, right? And can also be, uh, this is also supported in the 2D drawing mode. Um, so let me show you an example on, on that one. So let's see if I could uh, open up that part where I've, uh, I've done one of those already. So you could see that I do have two bodies in here. Uh, if I go to my bodies, there's a housing body and the overmold body, right? And there are features, contributing features inside of that, right? 
Um, now, the, the good thing about um, um, bodies is they're also supported inside of a UDF. So those have used user-defined features. That's uh, been there ever since, you know, since ProEngineer has been there. It's a very powerful tool, right, to automate things. So in here, I could use the a UDF to place one more, um, you know, such body here. That's what I'm going to do now. So if I want to go and use a user-defined feature, and if I go to my... Um, folder I do have this group feature this cutout port with the overmold so let me just and it's asking me to select the coordinate system and I do have the the coordinate system here that I'm going to choose my top surface and then my bottom surface there uh, and it's asking for the body right the main body right here so let me just go use the main body is this guy and for the overmold body right there that's going to be this one here and there it goes, right? So it has created that. Let me turn off my uh, coordinate system here. So if you look at this group, the way it was done, so there's my your extrude, uh, and there's like a couple more extrudes in there, uh, rounds and, and all that, and then there's your sweep. That's when, you know, the other body, you see that sweep five is contributing to this over mold. So that could be defined as part of the UDF. And then we did the subtract to remove the interference like before, and then final subtract here for that detail too. And so now if I look at my cross section, activate my cross section here, you could see and maybe even uh, display my uh, hatching, hatch styles. I'm able to apply different hatch styles for each one of them. So if I were to go edit my hatching, so even though it's a part, you have the option to apply it for individual bodies. So I'm able to go to, for example, to the overmold body, and I can assign, like, for example, maybe a, a different angle, right, I guess, for that, or, or a different, um, you know, much more denser, for example, or I could use some of these uh, styles that PTC had for a long time now, right? So predefined material-based style, both uh, ANSI, ISO style, right? There's quite a few in there, right? You can just hover over it. It kind of gives you all those different styles there. But my point is, you know, bodies are supported in there as well, right? So, so that's another uh, use case. Um, uh, and and um, let me just uh, going back to my presentation here. There are a few more, um, few additional ones uh, that I wanted to go over before we get to the other core areas. Uh, for example, um, many of you may be aware of the master model methodology in Creo, very popular in large assemblies. Uh, sometimes you may have a smaller assembly where instead of creating all those external references and you know that you would normally do for master model technique couldn't you use the bodies right you have this toothbrush uh, assembly that i'm showing you here wherein uh, you know instead of you know i know the, the ultimate goal is to get there but then you could you know use the space claim geometry as a that could be like an um for example uh, a construction body around which you're going to build this Right, it could all be in uh, one single part and multi as multiple bodies, and then you have the ability to create a part out of these, um, and you can create an assembly too off of that if required. But just just another use case, uh, if I were to go back and show a simpler example than that, uh, really quickly in the time, interest of time here, if I go to a part that is uh, you know pretty straightforward design that's already done, it is one body and a few features there. Um, and I could use this uh, sketch and let's say I want to extrude, maybe uh, we'll just remove some, some material here, make it solid, and we'll just also thicken it to a specific value. Um, and maybe uh, we'll also remove material, um, but it's going on one side, so maybe we want to change the, the side to uh, symmetric. There it is, right? So we have it on... Maybe we'll just set it to the somewhere like that. It just created a, a little, uh, you know, just to show you that you're also able to split the body, right? So I have one part right there, one body. And when I go to split body, you can either use a splitting object like a quilt. You could have used that too. Or you could use volume um, based wherein you're able to select the actual surface uh, of that cut. And now it has become, you know, you can see the color change and everything, right? So it's it's two bodies right now, right? Piece one, I could just go and and, and rename that to, for example, piece two or what have you, right? Uh, and 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 also I could just go and uh, create 
a part from the body, right? I can create a new part off of that and it'll be an external copy job out of that, right? So, so just to show you some, the more use cases you see, you'll get an idea of where uh, this multi-body uh, design, you know, new multi-body support in Creo 7 could be used. Uh, as for the 2D drawing, which is what you would send to manufacturing, obviously, right? They're also um, PTC supporting the multi-body, right? It could be for the hat styles, right? Like in that um, injection molded over mold part, or it could even be for repeat region where uh, you have specific report parameters now that would control uh, how those body information like parameters, like materials, mass, et cetera, could be um, displayed as you can see here, right? You're able to show that. Uh, and you have the ability to go to your model tree while in drawing mode and hide in model that you would normally do with components, right? Very similar to that. So if I could uh, quickly open up uh, a drawing to show you that use case, uh, if I could, uh, there it is. Um, so there's the same um, component that we had earlier, uh, and, and you could see my detail view, my top view, front view, and there's my cross section view, and I'm able to go edit that cross section. You get a good old menu manager there, and there's your component area, and you have your body there, right? You can just go to body, and you can just select the body, and you can just go uh, spacing. Maybe we'll just increase that density, or you can just go to next. And now you can just go to a spacing again and increase that, et cetera. So you have individual control. So bodies are supported there in the 2D drawing mode. Uh, and also they have um, uh, tables, right? If you go to the, the table, many of you may be familiar with the repeat region table in Creo, right? Um, so now that bodies are supported in the drawing mode, they got bomb description down, bomb, uh, you know, body description uh, up and body description down uh, predefined. So for example, you could just go and um, use uh, one of these and you see how it is picking up my, my thermoplastic uh, with glass fill fiber. fiber. And, and, and you can also see the over mold with um, uh, silicone rubber, right, the material. So each one of those could have its own material and I'm able to call it out in here. The way this is done, obviously, if I have to show you manually, is repeat region, right? So if you're an admin, you might be interested what parameters they have in Creo 7 to support body. So you could just, this is a repeat region where I'm just going to go, you know, repeat the, the index here. I'm going to just go in here and say, if you want the, the body name, so that's where they have the NDL um, body name. Like that, I could use uh, right in here. I probably want to have the model body right ptc material properties in here so maybe we'll give the reported material uh, or in here i might want to go model body uh, user defined i have a user defined parameter called mass i'm just going to use that and like that i could have mass units uh, you know etc right so i could keep doing that user defined or i could just go just to say i want to have uh, the model um, body uh, and then i could just go to ptc material properties i could keep selecting several like that right um, oh, I already selected material there, but I could just let me go to uh, edit definition here and just remove that guy right there. So like this, I could keep adding and, and you could see how once I'm done updating the model or updating the, um, the table, it is uh, uh, listing out the body material. And there are, um, you know, drawing setup file options that could show either the, uh, the list material, right? Uh, you could even go back and in fact, uh, select your repeat region attributes right and just say recursive so it shows the main body so by default whatever material you apply to the part that's what is assigned to the body but you're able to change that right so i have the the main uh, part there and then you have the two bodies with individual materials there and with its mass properties so so it is supported in the drawing mode um, it's also supported in various other areas, right? Some of you may be using sheet metal design. So here I'm using these two ring bodies inside of my sheet metal part. I'm able to insert these two bodies. And when I do my flat pattern or unbend, I can have it follow based on a coordinate system that could follow the surface, right? It's uh, useful in model check where there are checks to you know for uh, bodies, so you could just have it check. You know, is there are there multiple bodies? What about the material? So you have specific checks uh, in the config for the model check that you can set up. 
uh, and then flexible modeling also, right? If some of you may be using uh, FMX for quick edits, there are some use cases there as well, um, wherein you're able to just, you know, have imported geometry or maybe some Creo geometry that you want to make last minute design changes, you could use um, FMX to quickly change and split. For example, if I were to quickly uh, show you an example here. So um, let's say I want to open up a, a design like this right in here. And this is, this could be an important model, right? It could be designed in some of the CAD system. I don't have any feature tree, obviously. Um, and and uh, so if I if I look at my dat datum planes in here, I got, you know, the three planes in here, uh, you know, one in here. I want to start using them to split. So if I go to my, right now it's one body, as you can see, body one, I'm able to split split that body and I'm able to use my splitting object as, let's say, this datum plane, uh, and there it is, right? So now you can see the color ch change there, right? And, you know, I got two different bodies in there. Uh, and maybe I can, as, as, as like before, I could just go, say, assign a different color to, to, to that body right there. I could just go up here and I could just go to the body and say that body or this body from the filter. So they have access to all that in here, right? So you can see bodies uh, is available pretty much in all areas in selection filters and drawing mode, right, et cetera. I'll just leave it back to geometry here. Um, I could further do a split, for example, maybe I wanna split, uh, I wanna set this, this body is active right now and let's split that body uh, and using, for example, uh, this plane, right? So it's gonna, I'm just almost doing like, yeah, three bodies right now. And now I'm able to go to my to the to the body, right? So I'm able. To, so I got if I if I go, you know, hide and hide each body, you could see the difference there. So that's the so you got multiple bodies in there. And if I go into into this uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, this guy here. I'm able to go to flexible modeling. So in FMX, normally you would select geometry. So here I'm selecting. I've selected the body, and I'm able to move and use my dragger, etc. Right. I'm able to rotate, I'm able to use, for example, just use the axis here and we'll kind of rotate that a wee bit here. For example, something like that, right? So I'm able to rotate um, the actual, let's give it a, a, a small angle there and I've rotated that. Um, so, and, 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 and after this, right, you are able to do the, the merge back on it, right? So you're, you're, even though you're doing such quick changes using flexible modeling extension, you are able to select this body and, and do a merge, for example, and merge to this one. And, you know, you're able to create those merges. And, and I know these, these geometries, you know, those of, if you have used flexible modeling, there are ways to quickly remove those, uh, right? You should be able to just remove some of these geometries and it kind of, so that it hopefully uh, fills it in. You can use it for even defeaturing, for example. So I'm just gonna go uh, remove that. Uh, right up there and, and and there it is and i can start creating my my rounds and fillets what have you right i'm able to do that too in here so if i go to my round tool i could just say let's add a round in there make it a, a small value right up there something like that i'm able to add to all those edges right in there right um so uh just just so that you know just so you know right you're able to use uh, um, flexible modeling capabilities as well in this and now i got two bodies in here I could go to this body and I could just, again, say, let's move this body here. Maybe I want to use, um, uh, or maybe let's say I want to move the, the, the main body here uh, first, and then we could even copy it over to the other side. And uh, let's say I want to use, this is my reference geometry. I'm translating that body, creating essentially like a gap between them, right? Um, and this translate itself can be, you know, you can use your regular copy paste special, you know, that some of you may have used for general feature creation, right? When you use copy paste, you have this advanced reference configuration that allows you to select different references and there you have the option to select a different body. So I'm gonna go say, let's apply this to this body and for the surface, it should be this. Uh, and as I hit okay, you see how that translates further around, right? And maybe I might wanna start, you know, going back to, and, and maybe do some new extrudes in there. That could be like another new body, right? So maybe I wanna just select some, let's see here if I could use that as a reference here, one in here and maybe one a little bit uh, larger right up there, something like that. I'm essentially creating uh, an extrude uh, wherein I want this uh, extrude to go maybe stop at this face 
uh, maybe I want to go to the site two and say I want to go to here etc and I can even merge all these right so so just to show you the the, the, the we had the the flexibility and flexible modeling to edit any geometry right for creo or non creo and now combined with, with with the capability of multiple bodies you know the the possibilities are immense as you can see here so just a few other uh, uh, a few a few things before I go on to the uh, other enhancements is the data exchange right some of you it's made about flexible modeling where you know it's mainly used when you bring in you know f files from non creo uh, non creo files things that were authored in SolidWorks Inventor or other CAD systems if uh, for example if your SolidWorks part that that you are planning to import had bodies creo will be able to recognize that as you can see here right um so there is an option inside the import profile to allow import of bodies so for example if i had uh, uh let's see here if i could go to um one of my designs here i'm gonna i'm just gonna open up uh, a um before i open up that uh, many of you may have used it uh, ptc had introduced this back in creo 4 in, in fact creo 3 4 where they had these uh, data exchange profiles that you can set up right so depending on what you're importing is it mx katia step i just file etc so depending on that you're able to select uh, solidworks for example and you're able to set up you know import profiles so there if you look at the topology you're able to import uh multiple bodies into one part right you can do that or you could just say don't do that right i want them to be separate uh, separate uh, as always right by default and if you try to import for example um i want to go i have a a is a, a solid works part in here that i'm going to import and uh, right now um, once i as soon as i bring it in right this the sunglass uh, part right in here you could see how it's uh, has the nose pad frame and glasses as it was done in SolidWorks, right? Those three bodies, it's a part and it has the three bodies, right? And I'm able to obviously isolate them, right? And see it, right? The frame, I want to isolate that uh, or the glasses and I, I'm able to isolate that as well. And not only that, you're able to go and um, also individually, right? If you see, you're able to go and edit definition on these and if you go uh, not not the assembly mode but the actual uh, import feature itself you if you go to import data doctor that many of you may be used to for cleanup and everything it's uh, it's going to give you like individual uh, ones also right so if you could if you, you will be able to go back into these individual features in here solidworks id if you go edit definition and if you go to your import data doctor it is going to show you those uh, individual uh, surfaces for each body so it understands to group them into those individual bodies too so that's uh, quite useful with, especially if some of you may be working on non creo files that are also it's supported so it's so a huge support for uh, you know um, our, uh, across the board right in multiple areas as you can see here finally in windshield and visualization right so starting creo view 6.1 um, if you maybe use maybe aware of Creo View, uh, right? It could, uh, those are using Windshield. You know, you're able to visualize your files using Creo View, right? Um, and when you check in your files into Windshield, um, your CAD worker, you know, spits out that lightweight viewable for viewing. So uh, if the Creo part file had, uh, for example, uh, the bodies, the three bodies I have here, and if I export that, you know, it will know your, um, your Creo View 6.1 understands to look at those. So I have a construction body here, the fluid cylinder and the control for the plunger here for the fluid uh, flow right there. Right. So it'll support there. Uh, for example, if I go to my um, uh, part in here, I have a, a, a part uh, where, and you can, as you can see here, we got the main uh, cylinder features here and then we created the fluid volume. Um, and that's the, the construction body, you know, any, any body right here, you're able to set it as a construction right there or unset as a construction body. Um, and then, um, there is my, uh, there's another for the control. I have that plunger, uh, feature here. There's a control body and I'm able to just mimic, uh, you know, the open close using an FMX edit feature here, right? So I'm able to just control that or maybe even suppress that, right? I've just called it open it. So I'm gonna, if I suppress it, as you can see here, it subtracts that geometry. All this has been subtracted, right? Or if I go resume that, it's back on. 
uh, and and now it's um, if you look at I've subtracted that too, and this is this could be used in you know in in Creo Simulation Live for example. That's the main use case here actually. If I go to uh, Live Simulation, and if I go, it's it's I've already set up uh, in CSL. I've already set up some um, some boundary conditions here where I've set up an, an like an inlet to velocity here. Uh, some boundary conditions of flow velocity of uh, about uh, 100 millimeter per second. I've set up uh, an outlet pressure of zero here for that's being the outlet. And I've also set up a, a thermal initial temperature here of 20 degrees, right? Uh, and if I go to my live simulation, um, it's, uh, in, it's using uh, GPU-based, um, you know, ANSYS-powered real-time quick feedback. As you can see, I didn't have to mesh. I didn't have to run the analysis. It's real-time in here. Uh, and I have, you know, different options to see there, right? I can just go look at the cutting plane. Again, I'm taking advantage of the bodies in here, even inside of simulation. That is my, my main point to, to show you this. And if I look at the cutting plane, you know, you could see the, the flow there. I'm able to look at different, uh, you know, velocity, pressure, temperature, et cetera, right? You can, you can, you're able to see those in here. And you're able to go suppress, resume your, uh, your, uh, uh, your, uh, FMX edit feature as soon as I suppressed it. Now it's going to take a while. Can you see the, the the flow has changed now? Or if I go resume it, it should change. You know, it's again, it's re, it's it's in real time, almost in real time. It's giving you the the feedback there, right? So that's another use case where um, uh, multi-body could be used. So across the board, quite a few places. And and the main reason I wanted to also open up that was if I had a part like that. Um, with that uh, control valve part, and I'm not connected to Inchil here, but let me just save it as to uh, a PVZ file. So if I go to uh, a Creo view uh, file right in here, we'll just put it in my desktop somewhere. It is uh, just saved it as a PVZ file, and if I go to my PVZ file, and if I open it with um, with Creo View, I have 6.1. So starting 6.1, it's uh, it's supported. And there it is, right? So you're able to see those three bodies that you had in Creo. So that are just supported right in there. And um, the fluid itself um, uh, is not showing up because it's uh, you have your Creo View filters, right? Where and it's 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 thinking it as a construction geometry and rightly so, right? And you've got to turn on the surfaces and then it should start showing there, as you can see here, right? So, okay. And starting newer windshield releases, uh, you know, there are going to be some more updates on this area, but uh, that's, uh, I know that as well, one of the questions earlier, thought I should uh, quickly go over that too, so. Um, then, um, you know, in simulation, I think we talked about it. It's also useful in additive manufacturing for creating lattice structures. For example, you can split the body and add your lattice structure there. And even in generative design, you know, we've already gone through some of these in separate webinars. So feel free to, you know, look up uh, at TriStar's YouTube channel. We have gone through these uh, in enough detail. But those are the other areas where it are it is supported, right? And, and just before we wrap up here, just a few more um, general enhancements uh, in here in Sketcher. Uh, like I said, uh, they have improved the visualization in Creo 7 a little bit, where you have the option to control your constraint size, you know, the constraint display icons, right? They're much better than before. Uh, better feedback when you work on in Sketcher, for example, uh, if I were to just open up a, a quick uh, sketch example here. So I got a sketch done in... Uh, Creo 7, or even in any sketch done in even a previous release is right there. By default, as you can see, you see the, the, there are like circles around these. And not only that, you're able to go and change the size of those. So if I go to Entity Display, and under Entity Display, I have the option to construct, to show, it has, gives you a little preview, and I can make it a little bit larger, smaller, et cetera, right in here. I can also change the colors. I made it a little wee bit larger there. I can reset it. And when I cursor over any of these, you still have the good old uh, explain it to me that we had for a long time, right? But the new, uh, I, I really like how, whether you have, it's a dimension or if it's a, it's a constraint, you cursor over it. I clearly know that this point is symmetric off of the center line, right? 
Um, so that's that's uh, it's it's a little more apparent, I think. So they they kind of improve that visualization up there uh, in in sketch mode. Uh, and finally, you're able to mirror in, instead of sketch off of any a straight entity it could be a straight edge it could be a reference line you know before it used to be you had to always use a center line so i'm able to do this mirror right off of this line um, or a reference line i don't have to sketch a center line per se like we had to do in the past right so for example if i were to go into um let's see here maybe a an example like this here i have uh let me quickly get into sketch mode maybe we'll hide the constraints for now um, so there it is, right? I'm able to. I'm, I'm just selecting these these um, um, these two entities, these slots in here. And uh, if when I go mirror, uh, right? You know, before it used to be only center line. Now you can select any straight entity, an edge, or a curve to mirror off of, right? So there it is, right? I'm going to just mirror off of that. And I can I have config options to control if this is going to be locked and not locked, etc. I can also use a reference line. You no longer have to go sketch a center line, right? Uh, like the used to before and then mirror it, it's not required now. So, um, and then uh, a few other enhancements uh, in here, snapping. Uh, snapping itself is pretty nice, but we had many customers talking about how when you had a lot of hidden geometry uh, in your uh, sketch view, um, there was a chance that it might try to, you know, snap to unwanted geometry, right? You're probably planning to, to, to only snap to visible geometry and not these type of hidden geometry. So they have a nice, subtle setting here right you still want the ability to snap to model geometry that's a big uh, yes for in my view however instant snapping right that can be toggled off the, the use case for that is it's a uh, it has a lot of um, i mean benefits i think if you're a user of creo wherein um let me open up uh, an example it's easier to explain it so i got i great just created a simple part with some patterns on the other side and, and here i have a sketch if I go to my sketch view and and as I start, you know, um, dragging out, as you can see, as I'm start uh, sketching it, why does it go and snap to all of these? I, I know the workaround is you can use a shift key and, you know, that was introduced way back and then shift key doesn't, uh, it doesn't assume anything, but still, you know, you want, you don't like this. So you can always right mouse click and you can just say instant snapping to geometry can be toggled off. So the next time when I sketch, even though you may have this uh, hidden geometry, right? As you can see, it doesn't do it, but it just still allows me to snap to the outside, which was my original intent, right? So I think that's a nice little thing that's very useful when you have these kind of lot of hidden geometry that you don't want it to, uh, to really snap to, right? Um, okay, so let's uh, move on here. Uh, on the core modeling, uh, one of the big ones is the draft. Draft has been improved right from Creo 5, 6, and 7, right? They, they allowed in Creo 5 the ability to draft when you have rounds uh, and chamfers. Unlike before, they did that because they're able to leverage that flexible modeling technology that they got from CoCreate, wherein behind, under the hood, it's essentially removing that round or chamfer, putting the draft, and then, you know, and then putting it back on, right? That's how it's working. Now, starting 7.0, you're able to do what we call the, a draft recognition, so to speak, right? You're able to identify existing drafts on any type of geometry. It could be imported or it could be Creo. It doesn't matter, right? You're selecting that surface, selecting the hinge, and it understands, it's telling you there is a 10 degree draft. Would you like to change it? Right, right in there, right? It's, it understands that. So that's, that's a pretty nice feature, I think, um, in Creo uh, starting 7.0. You have that where if I go to, um, for example, a surface like this, when I go draft, moving forward, when you create a draft feature, instead of thinking of it as a creation feature, think of it also as an as a recognition feature. It's able to recognize the 10 degree draft. You know, I was, I was able to select a surface that was already drafted and I was able to select that 10 degree and maybe I can reduce it to seven degree, for example, or what have you, right? Or I increase it. You're able to do that. Not only that, it's able to identify the adjacent rounds and chamfers. If I go, add the draft in there and I say, my hinge is gonna be this. Um, it's, I didn't, it just, the intent was not to create the draft, but for the system to identify, right? And, and, and as you can see, it took a, a few seconds there, but it's pretty, it was able to identify those existing ones. And uh, under the hood, it's using a flexible modeling technology, right? I mean, you don't need the license for it, but it's, and, and you can also, you know, undo that round. You can say, I don't want that round or chamfer, or you can, you know, simply, set it to a, a different angle right there or something like that 
and you're able to you know it's a, just it's taken a while since it has to adjust those uh, you know it has to remove that put it back on that's, that's what it's doing right now but it's quite powerful I think uh, again when you have geometries from other CAD systems or even a Creo model where it's a big model you cannot afford to go back reorder etc it's, it's very useful I think um, and then uh, Accuracy, uh, starting Creo 7.0, PTC recommends uh, using absolute accuracy, especially due to the multi-body capabilities that I talked about earlier uh, in the presentation. So when you, you know, their default templates would, would have two, right? For every, you know, uh, template like inch template or metric template, you would see an absolute one and a relative template out of the box. Now, again, this will not affect your existing current start parts, right? I mean, um, those are already using a start part configured. You already have it. This is just for newer customers. You implement or install Creo and you hit file new part. It's going to pick up absolute accuracy instead of relative accuracy, right? Um, and then, you know, uh, we talked about import data adapter and you have a new display filter that you can configure. Um, if you have, um, you know, those type of additive, uh, you know, manufacturing like some parts where you might have created some lattice structure to optimize the weight, right? Or, uh, you know, you are able to show that is it a boundary rep versus a mixed one? You're able to set up some transparency there. Uh, those have done well design. Um, you know, Creo 4 had a major update wherein they supported uh, solid welds, right? In Creo 4.0, but in 7.0. Uh, you're able to, they, they allow you to handle situations like this that were not handled well before, right? Uh, for example, you're able to do a solid weld, but then in complex, in, in corners like this with different sizes, the system is able to adjust. So these two scenarios right here, it's able to adjust and still create that, uh, that, that transition for you, right? So that's a good improvement, I think. Uh, many customers have been asking for that too. Uh, and sheet metal design, a very, very... Uh, one, one single enhancements really, right? Really, you can you have the ability to to trim the edge of a sheared form. So what do I mean by that? Is better always, you know, when I showed it, it would make more sense. So let me go open up a, a, a quick design here, uh, just a simple sheet metal part, you know, maybe make it uh, something like that. And I'm going to do a form feature, right? So I didn't have a tool here. I'll just use a sketched form. Sketch form was there since Creo 2, as many of you may know. But here I'm just going to go sketch a, a circular, uh, you know, something like that. I'm just going to form that, right? So maybe we'll add some uh, taper in here. Yeah, something like that. And then we'll also add uh, options for rounds, obviously, right? It's going to be formed in there. So. Um, and and when I do these type of features, right? In the past, you know, as you can see here. As I'm um, increasing this diameter, and as I'm, yeah, as I'm increasing this angle in here, um, if so, there is this trim shared option where it allows you to control that final flat state, and you see the surface right there. If I don't, by default, this is what used to happen before. You know, the deformation in that geometry. Uh, and if I do like a, a like a flat state, or let's say unbend all, right? If I go unbend, uh, or actually flatten form, I should say, because it's a form feature, you could see that 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 geometry there, right? Instead of that, now you're able to just use your options and say, I want to trim edges of shared form, um, and it's able to just keep that uh, straight in there. And if I go now do a uh, a flatten form, there it is, right? So that's that's pretty much the only enhancement in 7.0. Uh, compared to 6.0 on the sheet metal side. Sur surfacing, right? Those if you use freestyle, you finally have that aligned draft. It was a you know, huge requested enhancement. We used to have like alignment, tangent curvature alignment, right? When you build uh, those subdivisional based surfaces and using freestyle and connect to an actual solid geometry, now you're able to go align draft and give like, okay, the, the datum plane, you could select and say it has to maintain 10 degree draft in there, or here's like a parting line scenario here where I've exaggerated the angle to 55 degrees. So a few other enhance, you know, enhancements there that might help. Um, and on finally on detailing, right? Um, when you open any 2D drawing starting Creo 7.0 uh, and, and you need cursor over, um, uh, when you cursor over, there is going to be like a little uh, preview as you can see here, very, very useful. 
um, um, there it is, right? It's, it's uh, quite useful there. Um, and it can also do a right click and do a summary for view. That's also useful. All those are uh, useful. They, they have also allowed you to finally add columns to drawing mode, right? We, we, we can add columns to the part mode and drawing mode in model tree. You can do that in the drawing mode now. So if I go to my drawing now and um, if I open up uh, one of these uh, drawings real quick, if I open up, uh, let's see here, uh, maybe a, a drawing that I already have put together a few views. Um, if I cursor over, you see how it kind of gives you a, a, a general, like a, a almost like a tooltip, if you will, right? It's much better than the old view info, right? And you can configure that. You're able to go file options and you're able to go detailing and you can control those view tooltips as you can see here. What is it that you want to show? Maybe you want to show the scale. Is there a simplified rep on, the, on that uh, view, et cetera, right? All that can be shown. And now if I cursor over, it tells me, is it a master rep? What is a scale? And it's available for pretty much for all the views, right? Very useful. This is a section view. They also have the, the right-click summary uh, of for view. It's, it's better than the old uh, uh, view info, I think. It's kind of like very similar, but it's useful, right? Those are two uh, nice enhancements. And, and in the model tree, or I should say in the drawing tree, actually, when you're, you're now that you're in the drawing, you're able to add and add columns like you would on the 3D side, on the 2D, you can go tree columns, and you can say, for example, uh, parent view, child view, simplified reps, etc. So, so it kind of gives you an idea um, of the parent-child relationship inside of those views. You also have uh, the ability to sort by view models. If you have multi-model, multi-sheet drawing by parent view, uh, you're able to select. Um, you know, you can just right-click and say show child views. It kind of gives you a sub you know, like a small, uh, uh, you know, uh, inset here that kind of gives you an idea of the different views in here. Uh, and maybe, you know, there's one view, this detailed view was created in that second sheet. I can, I can switch to the other sheet really quickly through that, right? So pretty, pretty useful. And, and some of the other uh, enhancements in drawing, you know, I know we're getting a little bit on time, uh, you know, just to wrap up here, a few more additional things. Uh, hidden line removal is improved. Um, you have finally a move arrow with name when you do a right click and hold when you have that cross section arrow. You're able to add, um, you know, uh, normal or tangent leader uh, annotations. You could do this before, but you can only do it on um, not with the normal or tangent options. So this is applicable to GTAL symbols, notes, etc. Right, like this. Uh, so for example, if I were to uh, create some, uh, we'll just add a, you know, assuming this would be a part. For example, I've just created something real quick here, I'm able to just right mouse click add a leader and I can keep adding that, uh, there it is, right? And if I go to uh, hold down the shift key and I'm able to select it, so this is applicable to to, to notes, balloon notes, right? You know, all those, uh, they support that. Um, a few uh, things on, uh, on um, uh, ordinate dimensioning with the baseline. Right, it's, it has better cleanup options now compared to before, or alignment options, I should say. Um, you know, so to control the contour length, right? This is more of a, a standard uh, that many customers were uh, asking for. Um, and on the compliance side, uh, you know, right now Creo 7 supports uh, ASME Y14.5 2018. So if you have GTALs, uh, you know, that are you know if, that are not supported in the latest version, it will give you a syntax error. Um, you're able to change it though between 2018 and 2009, etc. You're able to switch it. Um, so if I were to go to a to a drawing like this, uh, and if I go to um, uh, let's see here, we'll just yeah, I, I I think most of us you hear it's ASME in the in the states, so we'll just open up. Uh, so there's my uh, you know MBD model, right? I've done it in the 3D model. Uh, obviously, all these GTALs here. So if I were to go to one of my views here. And um, and if I just try to edit this um, GTAL, right? As you know, in Creo 4, they introduced this uh, all these GTAL interface right at the top. So there, I want to go set it to concentricity, and immediately I get a red line. Why is that? It's uh, if I if I cursor over, and if I just wait for a second, it should tell me that it is not uh, um, that it is right. Concentricity concentricity is not supported in the standard anymore. So if I go so what is my standard? I go to my drawing properties, right? Um, 
And under drawing properties, if I go to my tolerance standard, right now it's set to ASME Y14.5 2018, able to change it. So maybe as a company, you're not yet prepared or you're not yet up to date on that, you, you could switch it. But I like that spell checker or syntax checker that it has come up there. Or maybe if you go to, now it's fine, right? Since we have switched to 2009 version, it's okay with that. Or if you go to, uh, you know, uh, another, um, you know, nice little enhancement. Um, in Creo 4, they added the ability to add additional text, which is nice, right? But let's say I want to add, they have this new enhancement. It's pretty nice. Wherein uh, if I go to add something like, uh, for example, I added a, a, a new, right? I added a new, uh, two new notes in there, but the spacing there, right? That they should be aligned. I can just click on the little icon and, you know, it's, you know, it's a little one in there, but it kind of makes it look better with those uh, stacked up, you know, mul uh, you know, stack up, uh, you know, mul when you have multiple uh, tolerance stacks right there or frames there. Okay, so like that, uh, you know, just just a quick overview that was on on the drawing mode. Um, and so yeah, these are some of the things that I showed you the the checker syntax checker for the updated new versions um, of ISO as well as ASME standard. And uh, finally, uh, the render studio uh, has been improved. Um, if we were to create a cool picture out of your assembly or part in Creo, we could do that before, right? In Creo uh, for itself, they have uh, the, um, um, uh, you know, they, they have a very good rendering, uh, you know, it's key shot powered compared to before, but um, the reflection and, you know, geometry or the reflection plane was automatically selected and now you have the ability to use a custom floor plane. I think uh, that's a nice enhancement there. Uh, if I were to go and uh, open up, uh, for example, um, a, an assembly here that I have just to show you the rendering. And if I go to shading with reflections and we'll just go perspective view, we'll just say ambient occlusion, scene background and all that. Right now, as you can see, the reflection is off of this guy, right? It's really off of that that surface in there, right? Um, and so, if I wanted to have a other surface, I know I, you know, we could go to view and uh, you know edit the scenes, right? As before, that's all possible. You can go to the environment and you can say, okay, from bottom, should it be back or it should be front, etc. Or now you have this option, which is nice, where I can go select um any surface that i want so i want that surface and now it's the reflection is off of that right it looks kind of very quick and easy rather than you figuring out okay do i have a plane in there and what orientation i have right i'm able to select that real quick maybe i can just go back and set it to this guy here and now it's off of that right and and of course i can do the the rendering i can go to applications and i can go render studio and i can i can really do the the actual rendering uh, that it's starting to do right now, right? That's when it's using the key shot based renderer right now, right? It's using that. So, okay. So that's, uh, yeah. So, and, and one last thing, uh, if you are um, using, um, you know, the mannequin um, to, to, you know, in, in, in assembly mode, um, you know, the render uh, also works inside of the mannequin vision window, which it didn't do before, right? Right. So whatever render, rendering it done on the 3D assembly will work on the mannequin vision window on this inset view as you can see and you're able you have the ability to pause the rendering now maybe you want to do other things and get back to it right while it's chugging or creating the high quality rendering uh, and if you were to export or create AR experiences from Creo which has been supported for a while starting Creo uh, 4, 5, 6 and 7 it's been there now they have the ability to also um, you know publish those combination states, right? So that you would create inside of assembly mode, you can publish those as well, right? These combo states can be published. That's going to be very useful. So, okay. So sorry, it took a little more. The, uh, we went uh, well beyond time here, but just uh, before you wrap up and get to the questions here, a uh, couple of, um, a few uh, useful resources. Uh, instead of Creo, you can access the help, what's new documentation, the config options, what's new. Uh, there's also uh, the um, tutorials as to what's new. They have much more in-depth information as to what exactly changed in every single area of Creo 7, with tutorials and videos, some of them, so that would help. And if you're an admin, you're wondering what config options have changed, I would uh, suggest going through the PDF of Creo 7.0 config options, and especially look at 6 to 7.0, the delta, right? What has changed? 
and what has been deleted, what has been removed, things like that, right? There might be some new config options that relate to mode of multi-body situations, right? So all those are documented in there. Uh, and those are using Windchill if you're planning to move to Creo 7 from an older release like Creo 2, 3, 4, or 5, or 6. You know, this is, uh, you all obviously want to first check your Windchill compatibility before you make the decision to upgrade to Creo 7, right? So there's a table and this is all available in PTC support site as well, but instead of just putting it in there, depending on your windshield release. And all these recordings, you know, we have been doing quite a few of these uh, Creo 7 um, webinars of late, ever since it was released, different area, uh, webinars covering different aspects of the enhancements. So, you know, feel free to visit tristar.com and there you have under resource center, CAD, you, all these are archived, or you can go to our YouTube channel and you can access it there as well. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, let me see if there are any questions uh, in the questions area. Let me just check. Uh, let's see here. There's one. Okay. If you could touch on it during the demo, does PDM link recognize multi-bodies as separate parts? Uh, no. So I think, um, Mark, I, I that's what I, I think I, when I demonstrated that, I had mentioned that Creo View will show it as multiple parts, but not yet PDM link. In a future release, uh, maybe starting Windchill 12.0, there might be plans where you could try to, you know, designate that part and, and it might have it. But right now, no, the, the part will show as one single part. It's not going to create a structure, at least as of the current release of Windchill. Okay, so and then say another comment. Uh, thanks for touching on how to break bodies out into parts yes absolutely no problem um okay so there's let's give a few seconds here for if we have anybody else had any questions feel free to you know type in the chat session <clears throat> okay so with that i uh, just wanted to remind all of you about the cat limited time offers that we are running through um end of september um, if you're interested in these, please uh, reach out to your account rep or visit tristar.com to get more information about these. Okay, so uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. Any questions uh, on the topics that we have or um, any recommendations for future webinars, please reach out to us. Contact us at tristar.com or call us at 800-800-1714. So with that, uh, thanks for taking the time to attend this webinar. We hope uh, you liked it and it was useful to see to see a quick overview uh, on what's new in 7.0. Until we, um, you know, we can until we meet in the next webinar. Uh, you all have a great rest of the evening today and great rest of the week. Thanks. Bye.